the first night was uneventful. But the second night was a different story. I'm on uh, Sullivan Creek Road and um, headed up to go camping with Will Almer. Aaron is supposed to meet us later today. Yeah, and I can hear something huffing and sniffing, something big outside my tent. Sunday morning, um, I, I had already packed up the day before and uh, I got out about 9 o'clock, 9.30 and headed up to Sullivan Creek to meet Will. Okay, so about a week or so ago, I decided I wanted to have a camping trip with my friends up here on uh, Sullivan Creek. Saturday morning, early Saturday morning, I drove up here to get a campsite. This site is what I wanted, number 17. But as I uh, came up the road, every camp spot was taken. So I figured it was Saturday. Everyone would usually pack up by Sunday and leave. So I would just grab one campsite somewhere and camp for the night and then come back up here. So I went down, camped at, uh, set up camp at uh, site 10. And 30 minutes after I had my tent up, I saw a truck and a trailer leaving, driving down the road, and I realized that they were from site 15. So I immediately broke down camp there, drove all the way up to 15, set up camp, completely set up there, and spent the whole night there. And then the next morning, I drove up here to check. 17 was open, so of course, I went back to camp, broke it all down, came up here, set up camp, and then everyone showed up. So I camped three locations in less than 24 hours. So, and it was totally worth it. Look at that creek. That is amazing. Beautiful clear water. Breakfast of champions. <laughs> well, there's not a whole lot of flat spots, are there? Yep. Well, we got to have a place for Aaron to set up. I got a brand, I got a brand new tent. I want to test it out. So. Okay, today I'm up uh, camping with my friends uh, Will Ulmer and Aaron, and uh, possibly Bill will show up, but I'm not sure. But today I'm going to be unboxing, unpacking uh, my new tent, which is the Tigris Bungalow 2.0 uh, for bushcrafters and such. So uh, I'm going to put it together. We mostly just uh, sat around and talked uh, most of Sunday and Bill Basson showed up for a visit and he stayed for about an hour or two and then while he was there Aaron showed up. Anybody want a cold beer? Not yet, thank you. No, thank you. Are we recording? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we can't say beer on the uh, internet? No. Yeah. Talk about checking people for tips. Yeah. Oh, no I, no, I have discretion. No, you don't. <laughs> I don't? <laughs> You'll put anything on the internet to make the dollar nowadays. Look, you put me out there. Yeah. What do you think as far as rain? Did you get rain on the last couple nights? Last night I did. Ooh, so this weird thing happened to me. So about 2 to 30. Woke up here and something just snapped in the wind on the hillside across the river. This was at 15? Yeah. And then around, I don't know, 3.30 or so, almost 4, we're on my tent. My, my tent door was facing towards the field. And it just, like, someone like hit it with a flashlight, just real fast. So I immediately jump up. They're not going to be yet. Yeah. Shine the spotlight out the window. Nobody anywhere. Even my motion was there. So it was just. Yeah. It's crazy. 
I just figured the portal just opened up or something. Yeah, in that video, I've got the one about the green flash that we saw. Mm -hmm. That's what somebody said. Is mm -hmm. that's a portal opening? I don't. Know. You can't prove it because you didn't see it. But yeah, interesting. Theory. So you don't want to go through it? Uh, probably not. Not if it leads to hell. But I mean, right. if, if it's if it goes to another planet, you know. Yeah, that would suck. Would it have uh, oxygen and enough air or out to breathe? Might end up on your rings. your rings. So when this camp spot opened up, I immediately came up and grabbed it. I was here for like five minutes. I threw a dummy tent out so I could go break down my other camp and come back here. And before I got into my vehicle, I heard uh, like a gurgling roar or not roar, like a gurgling growl type sound coming up from up the road. And then like a few seconds after that, a very odd sounding whistle from the hillside across the road. Um, not sure what it is, but it was interesting. And then we, when I got back here, there was a nice big pile of uh, wolf scat right in the middle of camp, fresh. So we're in the wild. <laughs> and what are the reports you've heard from here? Just what I've heard from it. Oh, you hadn't heard the report? No. I met a guy uh, in Ione who lives in Ione. He used to live in Medellin Falls and up you know, all his life. He's lived up in this area. And uh, so we got to talk and him and another guy that was with him. And uh, he said that he had an experience here at Site 17. Okay. And... Uh, I think it was one evening, uh, late in the evening. There's still enough light you could see, but it was getting dark. And somewhere out here, <clears throat> he said that there was a Sasquatch just standing there looking at him. And he was kind of off to the side of a tree and looked in, you know, over the branch was hitting about here. Wow. The next morning they went out and measured the branch and it was eight feet up. Wow. Off the branch. Huh. And then we had heard reports from Gypsy Meadows, too, I think. Yeah, that's been a, a spot. And that's not far from here, mm -hmm. I don't think. Have you driven up there recently? I, I've never even passed this point. Really? Yeah. Oh, you should drive all the way up. It's cool. Yeah. I have uh, several security measures when I'm camping. My game camera pointing at my camp is one of them. So, like, if we go on a hike, you know, somebody comes in camp, it captures it unless they steal the camera. Uh, but especially at night, if we have uh, any predators or animals come into camp, um, we're able to capture and see what's going on, you know. You hear a noise and you can't see what's going on. With the game camera, at least hopefully it captures it. Let's see what we're doing here. Oh, it's just barely cooking it. What are you hearing, Will? Well, I did two two knocks and uh, heard something in this direction but I'm not sure if it's like people talking or what but it, it sounded like voices up that way across the creek up the hill well tell uh, me tell me about the ones we heard earlier you and I both heard them talking yeah we were just standing here in camp and we heard like a Woo type sound. And like what a minute or two later, we heard people chattering, I guess. But uh same kind of same direction across the creek up the hill. Not sure if there's a road or a trail up there or we couldn't find one on the map, but uh who knows? Good. But I have my audio recorder up there and I'm just getting logging trucks they get up, up there at like two thirty every morning. Oh. And there's one, there's uh, two nights or maybe three where there's a ton of knocks and there are some really heavy footsteps that go kind of really fast running by the audio recorder one night. And there's a really distant maybe howl, but it's so distant it's hard to tell. Something. So when you say footsteps, is it a biped type? It sounds style? bipedal, yeah. Yeah, wow. But I, there might be, you know, maybe a moose or something when it's running at a certain gate. Sounds bipedal. 
Right. But this sounds very bipedal. Wow. Yeah. And I mean, it's it's during those couple of nights when there's a ton of knocks. And that's what I found the last couple of years when I had the recorder up there. Most nights there's just nothing, and then you get a period of three or four nights in a row where there's a ton, a ton of knocks every night. Hmm. Ah, oh, good morning. I'm trying to get my coffee going. Well, I slept really good in the uh, One Tigress Bungalow 2.0. Um, been decades since I tent camped, and uh, it was nice. I closed the uh, porch down because it was. Uh, Probably about 40 degrees last night. It was pretty cold. And uh, with my sleeping bag and the pad that I bought uh, for sleeping on, that worked out really well. The tent worked out really well. And uh, I had a pretty good night's sleep. I actually slept, went to bed about 10 and slept till 4.30, got up, went pee, went back to bed. Slept in till 7, 6.30, So, uh, that was a good night's sleep. Well, before I head down to the creek to do some filming, I'm going to get my bows all set up and do a little target practicing today. Cayenne pepper. If you're older and you have uh, issues with blood flow into your feet, legs, and all that stuff, uh, start out with a little bit of this on your food. It's not hot um, like most peppers. And uh, it's antibacterial and it helps to open up your blood vessels so that you know your blood flows better in your body. And it's good for your heart. Uh, so. I'd swap out your regular black pepper for this. Uh, it's really good for you. It's one of those uh, things you learn when you get older. And you're looking for something to solve some of the issues. You know, like, I get cold feet really easy. Because uh, there's apparently lack of blood flow or something to them. I don't know. But it's really helped, you know, started to help me out. So I'm using it more and more. Pick this up uh, on Amazon. And the reason I got it isn't because I was concerned about, you know, um, the string scraping on my arm. Um, there was a guy over in Europe somewhere that was shooting with carbon arrows, and the carbon arrows busted. And uh, it was a wonky arrow and he shouldn't have shot it and it went right in his arm and he had to get an operation and really messed him up. So I decided I'm going to get at least something. Leather is a better protection than nothing at all. So uh, I'm going to try shooting my uh, 50 pound bow. You notice I got the quiver upside down. When I uh, first got into archery I didn't know anything about it. so. Put it on wrong, but whatever. Uh, every shot, too high. I need a lot more practice. You can just barely see the tree line. another street. Whew. 
Oh man, that breeze is not cold. We just sat around and just kind of relaxed and rested for the rest of the evening. So, it's uh, 12.47 in the morning, yeah, and I can hear something huffing and sniffing, something big, outside my tent. Hey Will, you up? <clears throat> hey Will! So, I've got my bear spray out, and uh, <clears throat> got my lights on. <clears throat> Woo! He's sound asleep. <clears throat> so hopefully he's okay. So, here's what's going on. <laughs> oh, man. So, I had uh, a little freak out there. Um, I tried to unzip and open my door so I could look out and see with the flashlight what's going on. And it uh, <clears throat> turns out that <coughs> I had my hand on the trigger of the uh, bear spray. <coughs> and when I went to reach for the tip, <coughs> the trigger went off and sprayed the inside of my outer flap, which is the porch on this thing. Let me tell you about the man who accidentally set off a bear spray in his tent. Immediately, I um, start gagging. And uh, so I just, you know, at that point I realized I got to get out of my tent. And so I unzip my tent and, and bolt out, you know, throwing the flap up and everything. So, and then looking around to see what's making that noise. Well... After looking around for a little bit, I'm still hearing the noise, but I don't see anything. It turns out it's Will snoring. And it's not a normal snore. It's it's a snore that sounds like whoof, whoof, whoof. <laughs> I swear it was a big animal or a bear outside sniffing. Um so okay so it's uh 12 54 now <clears throat> i've gassed myself um and i'm probably gonna have to stay up because i can't hardly breathe <laughs> oh my gosh <sighs> It's still wet. Hopefully it'll dry. Get two spots where it shot off. I couldn't. Uh, I couldn't possibly go back to sleep. So fortunately, I had made coffee the night before, and uh, I sat down in my chair. I made some. Co uh, drank some coffee, and uh, just I stayed up till like three, three thirty. That was uh, interesting. Uh, interesting adventure. I really 
goofed myself up by accidentally pulling the trigger on the bear spray inside my tent. So, you probably already know this, don't pull the trigger on your bear spray in your own tent. 